Dr. Hoffman, uh, why is there always such a solemnity about the Lord being a, a Roman Catholic? I just re, I tend to repel anything that has a... All right. You know, uh, all right, First Corinthians. Turn to First Corinthians chapter 11. This one of those, unfortunately, the Roman Catholic solemnity, their solemn, pious thing is a fake. And when it carries over into Protestantism, sometimes sometime makes you kind of sick. But there's a reason for it, and there's a Bible reason. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. For I have received the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus the same night which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which was broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, this do ye as often you drink it in remembrance of me. For all that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord a death till he come. Now, the first thing is obvious. If you look at verse 26, you'll see that one of the purposes of the Lord's Supper is to make you remember the second coming. You do show the Lord's death till he come. So obviously the Roman Catholic Mass has nothing to do with the Bible communion. You never heard a pope in your life talk about the second coming of Christ. When did you hear, ever hear a pope mention the second coming of Christ? No pope ever mentioned the second coming of Christ. You know why? When the Christ comes back, going to kick him off his throne. Or that means that every Roman Catholic mass is a joke because the purpose of the Lord's Supper was to show his death till he come. So if there's no remembrance of his coming, it isn't a Bible performance. Now the solemnity has to do with this. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, sick, many asleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. The reason why it's a solemn occasion is, before partaking of the supper, you're supposed to judge your sins. And if you don't judge your sins, then you might get sick, or you might get weak, or the Lord might kill you. So the reason why it's a solemn thing is because supposedly when the cup is being passed out and the bread being passed out, the Christians are supposed to be judging the sin in their life and confessing it. Now, if they don't, why, well, that's something else. But they should. That's the point. And it's a sad thing to think about a Christian waiting until that time the judge confesses his sins. But I've noticed in my own church when you don't have communion for two or three months, the congregation gets in rough shape, and after you have the communion for a while, some of the folks are having trouble straightening out. Now, you wouldn't think Christian would be that dumb. You wouldn't think any Christian would have to wait to communion to examine himself. But they do. They do. It's like some of the people in your congregation, some of my congregation, anyway, just go along week after week after week after week and just don't let things ride. So it, I know that the, the formal, if you're informal like I am, and believe in just letting things fly like I do, it's always kind of stiff when it gets that solemn and that sanctified, kind of gripes you and irritates you. But I've learned through the years that uh, it's a good thing, provided that the solemnity is because of examining sin and not just, you know, for a show. All right, something else. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.